confession. I love crappy romantic comedies. I had a difficult time with the first hour of the wreck. In its first five minutes, our protagonist, Junon, is called to a hospital to see her mother, who has suffered a ruptured brain aneurysm. She then quickly learns that unbeknownst to her, and despite a relationship that can be generously described as tumultuous, she's now responsible for making decisions about her mother's care. Junon enters her predicament with a bleary detachment. It's clear she doesn't care much for her mother, and unclear why we should care either. She's also having visions of a car crash with no obvious connection to the story at first, followed by flashbacks to color in the relationship with her mother and her sister, Diane. As a result, the introduction can be surreal and confusing, with not much in the way of clear stakes or reasons to engage with them. It's in this sense, this lack of a compelling narrative hook, that the wreck demands some patience of its audience a patience that, in due time, is generously rewarded. There's not much more I can say about the plot of the wreck without venturing deep into spoiler territory, and to do so would obviously be a disservice. This entire game is its plot. The wreck is a mostly linear visual novel that relies heavily on dialogue, making its writing and voice acting crucial elements to its success. Dialogue choices pop up regularly, but these are more to give some limited interactivity around what is said and the order in which it's said, rather than to feed into some grand branching narrative. Its visuals are mostly still shots of characters or scenery, sometimes spliced together to create simple animations in an almost stop-motion-like pattern. Many of the visuals are beautiful, though minimalist. There's a gently cartoony but firmly grounded vibe to them, and they don't focus too much on making characters or environments look intensely detailed. I found that this worked well, especially in the scenes that allow you to scroll through them at your leisure from an on-rails camera perspective. The game also works flawlessly on Steam Deck, with smooth controls and frame rate right out of the box. Typically, the game will cover some of Junon's internal monologue as well as some dialogue with another character before we relive the aforementioned car crash again and allow it to transport us to a flashback. You'll see this car crash many, many times, its relevance true enough to the game's title, but its method of forcing the player to revisit it with slight tweaks to the memory, followed by insight into Janon's past, is really effective, if eventually just a touch repetitive. While they do vary in quality, especially in the beginning of the game, many of these flashback sequences are really something to behold. Each of them allows you some degree of control by letting you scrub through the sequence, both forward and backward, and pick out floating words that trigger dialogue or commentary of the scene before you. And while most scenes are anchored firmly in reality, the transitions and cinematography have a dreamlike quality staged with such beautiful directorial flair that it's hard to not be captivated. I will say though, while moving through these scenes at your own pace grants both more interactivity and an effective plot device, the pacing of them would occasionally drag. On a few occasions, I either missed a dialogue trigger needed to progress and had to scroll a bit to find it, or the scene just kept pushing to rewind forward and backward multiple times to find everything. It never hit the point of annoying, but given how minimal the actual gameplay is here, there were times I would have preferred it be more railroaded than it actually is to keep things moving at a better cadence. A minor quibble, but worth mentioning. While the structure of the game hits a bit of a routine, the overarching plot is anything but that. Make no mistake, not a lot happens here. The game is almost entirely dialogue, with little in the way of action or acute conflict. But the writing is just so strong. Junon's story comes into focus one minor revelation at a time, and it does so with a measured pace that's quiet and reflective, often filled with ambient noise from the scenery rather than a riveting, dramatic soundtrack. And that's not to disservice the soundtrack at all, because while it doesn't show up too frequently in the scheme of the overall runtime, when it does, it's actually really good, with a mix of synthwave music hitting beats that are hopeful and melancholy in equal measure. I really like the soundtrack, and though I wish there was a lot more of it, I'm probably just gonna buy it myself at the first opportunity. Ultimately, all of the this comes together for a story that brought me to tears at least once in its 3-4 to four hour runtime, which, you'll just have to take my word, isn't especially easy to do. It uses great writing and powerful, nuanced performances to become a poignant reflection of loss, forgiveness, and prioritizing the fulfillment from a relationship over the noise of its flaws. But I'll stop short of saying it's a must-play, because this is not a game for everybody. The slow, introspective scenes of dialogue and undemanding pace may turn off those who seek a more lively and interactive tale. On the flip side, it's sorrowful tone and triggering themes like depression, loss, self-harm, and mentions of sexual assault may make it unpleasant for some, even though it handles those themes respectfully. But at the same time, this game feels intensely personal and could easily resonate profoundly with anybody who's experienced a tremendous loss.
This has quickly become one of my shortest reviews, but don't mistake that with me not having much to say about the wreck. I have a lot to say, but saying too much would take away the experience of discovering Junon's journey on your own. It's a journey about loss and trauma, but also about harnessing these things in a way that grants power and vitality. And in a lovely feat of thematic consistency, the ending of the game grants you a real choice, with a few different possible outcomes that affirm the path you as the player feel Junon's story should take, as well as the ability to quickly revisit the options if you'd like one that's different. Sometimes I found the game a bit confusing, a bit boring, or a bit repetitive, but every few scenes it would steadily improve, appropriately upping the stakes and touching on tough topics in ways that are more pensive and pragmatic rather than strictly crowd-pleasing. It's a story that will stick with me for some time, and one I strongly recommend to anybody who's interested. Hopefully it sticks with you as well.